Hey, what's up guys? How are we all doing? Today we're going to talk about JPEGs. Only the most interesting topics on the channel, of course. I want to start off by saying this video was inspired by the poster videos from Dr. Skipper and Astrosis, because just like every poster designer, I have shamelessly stolen their ideas so I can use them to make something much worse. But neither of them brought up the Cybermutt poster, so eat shit, guys. I'm not really sure if movie posters are really a thing that people think all that much about anymore, because if we're being honest, they're marketing, not art. I'm not saying they can't look good, but the priority isn't let's make something that film nerds can have on their wall for the next 50 years. It's like, how many people can we stack on top of each other? A lot of the most recent ones that people love to shit on do away with any kind of subtlety and just go straight for the most marketable things they can shove on there to get your ass in that theater. Doesn't matter how many fucking times they have to put Iron Man on the poster. And you know what that reminds me of? YouTube thumbnails, okay? I cannot begin to tell you how much I fucking hate making thumbnails because they have to do so many things at once, okay? You guys don't get it. I mean, yeah, all you have to do is put a bunch of shit that's gonna make people wanna watch your video, duh. But you're competing for attention so how do we do that? And the answer is the Rotten Tomatoes logo every single time. But plus it's got to follow a pattern so people know it's from you, which either means like putting a character you've got or a face where you're screaming in agony. And you got to get the whole vibe of the video across as well so people know it's going to be fun and not make your movie controversy video about Sonic the Hedgehog look like a serial killer documentary. But it can't be too overcrowded because it's going to be on an image that's this big and I'm already losing my fucking mind. Or you can just do a zoomed in image of Megamind's face and still get 2 million views. It's, it's fine. And I just think it's kind of funny that even with millions and millions of marketing dollars later, movie posters still have the exact same problem, except they're made by qualified professionals. I think. So it makes a lot of sense as to why they just kind of do the same thing over and over. Like anytime you hear people talk about movie posters, you're gonna hear them bring up floating heads within like the first five minutes. So I didn't want to break from tradition, you know? But just wait, before we get into it, it's ad time. This video is brought to you by Dragon Mania Legends, a free to play dragon simulator that you can play on mobile, tablet, or PC for free. A game that lets you collect, feed, and train over a thousand dragons. This game has so many dragons, they need a whole wiki to keep track of them all. First, you violently assault your screen to bring them into the world, then raise them into to a weapon of mass destruction to obliterate other people's dragons. The best part of the game though is when you accidentally drop fruit on the ground when you're feeding them and then they like walk over to it. Like look at them gotta go get it. Aww. Plus you can decorate your island with farms that you can use to grow more food to drop on the floor so you can see them do the cute little walk again. And you can do daily quests to get rewards including taking two dragons and making them get busy. I, I don't know if I can show this on YouTube. So make sure you click the link in the description to download the game and get free welcome gifts like 100k gold and 50k food when you use my redeem code DRAGONBOLT07. And also, you get the Burger Dragon. That's link in the description and you get your Burger Dragon. I got you guys, don't worry. Thanks again to Gameloft for sponsoring this video. And let's get back to JPEGs. Posters have kind of just turned into a way for them to brag about who they paid to be in their movie and nothing else. Like this doesn't tell me what the movie is actually about. It just tells you which of these 87 poorly photoshopped faces are an actor you might really like, you know? Are they boring? Yes. But are they also very effective and make a lot of money? Also yes. I know everyone brings these two up, but you cannot get a better example of the problem here than with the difference between the posters for Dune and the Northman. Look at this shit. Why? These two posters for the Batman are so good. So why the fuck does the actual one look like this? This does not make me want to see the movie. It just looks like it smells. And everyone is copying the style now. Like even this random DVD I found for a movie called Corrective Measures, which might be the greatest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. The worst example of all of these is the main poster for Spider-Man Homecoming. Because I just think it's really funny that they couldn't decide between putting Iron Man and Vulture in their suits or his big dumbass head. So they just did both. <laughs> and I actually think all of the MCU Spider-Man movies are in competition with each other to see who can have the worst poster. Look, look at this Nick Fury one. This movie made a billion dollars. Even the second Jurassic World did a floating head poster of the fucking dinosaurs. That is a stegosaurus. I'm not going to see your movie because there is a stegosaurus on the poster. I gotta be honest though, I'm not as big of a hater of this design as I know a lot of people are. Like there's only a few of them that I genuinely hate. I, I think if you're creative enough, there's definitely a way you can still chuck way too much shit on there and still make it look nice, you know? Like as soon as we put the floating heads in something, hell yeah. Yeah, now we're talking. Two guys standing there, dog shit. But if you put some shit in there, fuck yeah. So we can definitely do worse than these. Like if your poster is just face or guy, I, I hate you. How many posters of Tom Hanks' face does the world really need? The poster for Big looks like someone just told him the police know about his hard drive. Because so many of these are just trying to copy a formula, what you end up with is so many posters that just look exactly the same over and over again. Like every single Liam Neeson movie is just him standing there 
wearing black, maybe with a gun if we're feeling special today. I mean, there are only so many ways you can get across a funny romantic comedy with Matthew McConaughey in a single image, okay? And do not even get me started on Christmas rom-coms, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Which of these two for Hancock do you think is more ass? Because I honestly can't decide. And no, I couldn't do a better job, thank you. Have you seen that new Joker 2 poster that just came out that legit looks like it would fit right in with those fake DeviantArt shitpost ones? I don't know how to explain what's wrong with it, but it just falls into that genre of movie poster where everything looks fine until you look closely enough and realize that someone went to town with Photoshop. A lot of people bring up the Ready Player One poster with the disgustingly long leg, but I think some people have actually worked out it is the right size. It just looks really weird. I, I guess the Madam Web marketing team only had Dakota Johnson on set for like 10 minutes that day. Today we're gonna get as much mileage out of that one PNG of her as humanly possible, god damn it. I feel like every comedy movie poster is contractually obligated to be the ugliest shit you've ever seen in your life. Especially comedies about people in beds for some reason. <laughs> that man is not real. I do love that even the best movies have a hard time figuring out a way to get people to watch them though. Which is why all graphic designers tremble before the Garfield movie poster. You ever seen the poster for Groundhog Day? What is this shit? No, stop, wait, I actually have to talk about this for a second. I don't know if it's Bill Murray looking like the world's least interested mugging victim or the Mr. Beast thumbnail face in the corner, but like putting him in a clock because he's stuck in a time loop is something I'd submit for my fucking year five art assignment and then fail. And they had a chance to fix it with the DVD release, but they ended up making it even worse somehow. Well done on making Groundhog Day look like it belongs in the bargain bin at Target next to my ghost dog and sniper special ops. By the way, the pull quote for that one is extensive firefights. That is not a compliment, that is a statement. That's like if I wrote, it has acting on the fucking poster. And I hate this idea that people say that all movie posters suck now and they all used to be amazing. Because no, they were always terrible movie posters, okay? People just only remember the ones they want to buy off Etsy. For every Scarface and Tron and The Exorcist, there's also The Karate Kid, which makes me want to call Child Protective Services. I love the original Star Wars poster because of how much it overhypes the film. Look at this buff as hell Luke and Leia wearing way less clothes than she actually does. You just know the guy that made this was horny as hell, man. Posters aren't getting worse. They just aren't the only way to advertise a movie anymore, so they're not as important as they used to be. Because like back in the day, you only had one poster to make an impression on people, but nowadays most big movies don't stop releasing posters, and not all of them are created equally. The new Indiana Jones actually had a super nice hand-painted poster, but then you also have this one where Harrison Ford looks like you've just told him he has to do another Indiana Jones movie. There's still so many clever designs being used for movie marketing, it's just such a shame that none of them are ever going to go as hard as the one for Killer Bean Forever. Teaser posters I think can end up being way better than the final product sometimes because the only reason they exist is to be like an ad for the actual poster. None of these are excessive enough to sell you on the movie alone, but they at least get you excited, right? Like the teaser for No Way Home does such a good job of telling you what the movie's about without giving anything away, but then you get to the actual posters where they aren't even trying and it's like, oh, is that, is that the Green Goblin? The Cars 3 teaser is fucking legendary because it's just of Lightning McQueen dying. <laughs> with absolutely no context whatsoever, but that's like intriguing, right? Yeah, it made me want to go and see the movie so I could see Lightning McQueen die in a fiery crash. Like, I'll give them that. The teaser poster for Shin Godzilla is so fire that all they did for the final one was just move him down a little bit. And the posters for Ant-Man are definitely the most anyone has ever been paid for a five minute job. <laughs> Can you imagine the balls on this guy to submit this as a final draft? What an absolute legend. Th there's still some really lazy ones that bring the whole team down though, like the teasers for X-Men First Class with the pregnant Magneto and Professor X. Horror movies are kind of the only other place you'll still find this old style of poster being done, but more because they're kind of forced to, since, you know, there's nothing scary about floating heads unless we're talking about Woody Harrelson on the Venom 2 poster. They kind of have to be creative without giving too much away, so we still get some really good ones out of it, like Barbarian or The Boogeyman or Shaggy Dog with Tim Allen. It is funny though seeing how quickly they give up if it's like a franchise or sequel where the killer or monster's already been given away though, because like, look at the poster for the 2007 Halloween remake and then Halloween 2. Like, Wow. The original Halloween poster is just a fucking pumpkin with a knife, and it's so dumb, but so creative, you know? It tells you everything you need to know without giving anything away. The poster for the thing literally has nothing to do with the actual movie, but that shit is so iconic that it's even got its own action figure now. Even the really bad ones stick with this kind of design. Like, I feel bad for the person who went this hard on the Slender Man poster, and then found out that they tried about a thousand times harder than anyone did on the actual movie. And the one missed call poster is... I mean... 
Is this good? I, I can't decide if this is good or not. Oh, and we haven't even talked about text, by the way. Text on posters is kind of weird because all they do is make them look way worse, but they legally have to have a bunch of credits that nobody has ever read or 12 actor names that never fucking line up. Did you guys ever see that one Ninja Turtles poster with them jumping from an exploding building and that would have been totally fine if not for the release date? I, I do think a good tagline can make a poster better if they actually spend more than five minutes on it. The one for the Mario movie that says this ain't no game goes hard as fuck. I don't care what anyone says. All you need is a little heart and a big Johnson is kind of fire. But 90% of the time it's just shit like the poster for the Matrix Revolutions with everything that has a beginning has an end. Yeah, no shit. Discover how Willy became Wonka. From gamer to racist. Great things come in bears. Wait, sorry, you what? You know, I really wanted to have like a nice conclusion to this video where I like wrapped up whatever point I was trying to make, but now all I can think about is fucking Yogi Bear raw dogging Boo Boo. So anyway, I think that's about as long as I can talk about JPEGs for. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. And I cannot tell you how much I do not want to make the thumbnail for this video. <laughs>